In this video, we'll cover how to add and format additional dashboard elements. These include layout containers, text boxes, images, web pages, and blank spaces. Let's take a look at our sample visualization. It shows the number of medals won by athletes in Olympics since the 2000 Sydney Games. In this case, we have two floating color legends. If we want to group them together, we can place them into a layout container. This will let us quickly adjust both of their sizes without having to change each one individually. To do this, first let's select floating for our new object. Then choose the vertical layout container since we'll want to stack the two color legends vertically, one on top of the other. Drag the container out onto our dashboard. Now let's place a legend into the layout container by selecting the legend and dragging by holding the dotted gray box at the top. Since we are placing a floating object, our legend, into another object, we'll need to hold Shift. This will change the legend from floating to tiled. As we hover over, we see that the container highlights with a blue border, showing us that the legend will be dropped inside. Now we do the same to our second legend, dragging it and placing it below the first legend. Now let's select the entire layout container and resize it by dragging the lower edge. We can also adjust the width of both legends by adjusting the layout container. If we select a single object within the layout container, we'll lose control of the container. To regain focus, we'll need to use the drop down caret in one of our legends and then choose Select Layout Container. We know we are controlling the layout container because the border is colored blue. Now instead of floating the layout container, let's instead place it under our bar graph. We can do that by dragging the layout container to where we want to place it, and hold the Shift key to convert it from floating to tiled. Let's adjust the size to remove the extra space at the bottom. Now that we have our color legends placed where we want them, let's add a text box and have it act as our title. Since we want it to fit above our dashboard, let's choose it to be tiled, and then drag it out to the top. Enter our title. Format the text, and click OK, then readjust the size. Next, let's add an image of the Olympic rings. Click and drag out the image object to where we want to place the picture. Then, choose our image file. We can see that our rings are being clipped. That's because the image is larger than the space we've assigned it to. We can either make our image box larger, or from the drop down caret, choose Fit Image. This will resize the picture to match the image container's dimensions. We can also center it if we choose. Next, we can actually make the image a link to a web page. From the drop down caret, choose Set URL. Pick the URL we wish the image to link to. In this case, let's link it to the Olympic website. Now, when we click on the image, our default browser opens up to that web page. The next object we can add is a web page directly in our dashboard. Let's go ahead and drag it and drop it to the right of our tree map. Select the URL that will be displayed by default. In this case, let's go with an article about swimming on Wikipedia. Now that we have our embedded web page, it can display any website content, be that images, videos, or text. But now, let's allow our user to control what appears on that web page using one of our sheets. For that, we'll need to create an action by going up to Dashboard and choosing Action, clicking Add Action, and choosing URL. Now, we choose which sheets will control our web page. Let's only use inputs from the tree map, which lists all of our sports by number of medals and average age of athletes. Next, we'll have the action run from a menu in the tooltip. This is the default method. Then, we'll choose which part of our underlying data determines the content that appears on the web page. In this case, the caret shows all of the fields we can choose from. Since we want to show a web page with information for a particular sport, we'll pick sport. Finally, we need to use a website to search for that term. I happen to know that I can search Wikipedia by using the following syntax. This means the URL action will go to that URL and append the sports name to it. If we click Test, we can see a sample URL that will be used. Before we close, 
Let's give our URL action a name. This name will appear in the tooltip, so let's make it descriptive. Let's call it click to see a description of and add a dynamic field, sport. Now when we hover over our tree map, we can see the tooltip, including the hyperlink that activates our URL action. If we click on it, our embedded web page updates to that sports description on Wikipedia, and the user can scroll down to read more. A couple things to know. First, if we don't have a web page object on our dashboard, the URL action will open the link in the viewer's default web browser. And second, you can have multiple URL actions per dashboard, but they will only control a single web page object. Additional web page objects will not be controlled by those actions. The last dashboard object available is a blank space. This is helpful for spacing out content on your dashboard. In this case, let's add a blank box above our legends to create some space from the bar chart. This concludes our overview of dashboard elements. Thank you for watching.